As Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. It is not sunny in Philadelphia. Mostly cloudy skies today. Temperature comfortable 62 degrees. Denver has won the toss and they will receive. How does the offense change with Brock Osweiler under center? Dan? Well, obviously the message is uh, the turnovers and preventing them and taking care of the ball. But with Osweiler in the past he has held on to the ball not trying to force the ball into tight windows. So look for this Eagle defense which has 22 sacks on the year to put pressure on Osweiler and force him to take some sacks. Well Doug Peterson made a point in our conversation with him to mention the new faces and how those new players have fit in and become big contributors. They felt as if they upgraded around Carson Wentz and that has certainly revealed itself for the first eight weeks of the season. Jake Elliott will kick it off. Devontae Booker, the deep man. We're underway in Philadelphia. The hottest team in the NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles. Try to keep riding that wave today here at home. Brock Osweiler, his teams are 13 and 8 when he's the starting quarterback. 23 touchdowns, 21 interceptions in those games. It's been a circuitous route for him to get back to Denver. Yeah, as told, the starter told us yesterday the important thing for him today is to make positive plays in succession so as to make third down conversion conversions more manageable protect the ball obviously the instruction and command from head coach Vance Joseph yeah he said four 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 meaning four yards on first down four yards on second down four yards on third down Osweiler that's more than four yards on first down he gets Demarius Thomas involved right away and Jalen Mills with a tackle on Thomas. You know, the familiarity between Sanders and Demarius Thomas and Rock, Rock Osweiler obviously is very important. It's a perfect start as he stands tall against the blitz. Malcolm Jenkins coming from the weak side. C.J. Anderson in the backfield after the 14-yard completion to Thomas. And a whistle stops play. A timeout called. 32 seconds in. Timeout. Denver. A 30-second timeout. The multi-dimensional Gene Steratore, our referee today. And the head coach of the Denver Broncos is Vance Joseph. Team got off to a hot start, but they've struggled of late. Three straight losses, but still only one game behind in the AFC wildcard race. I know we don't look at the playoff picture necessarily in week eight, but it's not as if Denver is off the radar completely. No, and I really don't understand taking a time out there. If you are in a situation where you have a delay a game, you're still near the 40 yard line. You've had a successful play on first down. That timeout uh, is one you want to save, obviously, for the end of the first half. Cody Latimer in, third receiver. Rasul Douglas in at the nickel for Philly. First down for Denver. It's a running play. Angling towards the right and chopped down after the four yard pickup. C.J. Anderson. Starting offense for the Denver Broncos, Metalik Watson had been dealing with a foot injury. He's back in there at right tackle. They love the way that he run blocks. And there is Demarius Thomas. It's been nearly a year since Thomas has had a touchdown for one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Second and six for Denver. Anderson again. And they converge around Anderson after the pickup of three. Tim Jernigan in on that tackle for Philly. Defensively, Fletcher Cox continues to play at an extremely high level of Pro Bowler each of the last two years. Michael Kendricks last week had a sack, seven tackles in the victory over San Francisco. And in the secondary, Jalen Mills, NFC Defensive Player of the Week. He's playing at a Pro Bowl level. A.J. Derby, a tight end, sets up as a receiver on a third and three for the Broncos. Derby comes in motion. Osweiler from the gun. Pulls the trigger. Throws it high. And over the head of Emmanuel Sanders. Flat down Jalen Mills in coverage. And Sanders is joined. They make an illegal contact on Jalen Mills as Sanders was coming out Pass of the to the pass. Holding defense number 31. Five-yard penalty. Little tight coverage by Mills, but watch, he's going to grab right there the shoulder pad as Sanders on his out route. 
Uh, Jalen Mills has said that Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod have really helped him with his film study, understanding tendencies, how teams are trying to attack their defense. And that time didn't get away with the contact against Emmanuel Sanders. So it's a first down in Philadelphia territory at the 49. Two tight end formation. Keep it on the ground for Anderson, and he's stacked up. C.J. Anderson said there's a lot on Brock's plate, so he tries to recognize pressures and help the QB in any way that he can. Anderson now, in his fifth year in the NFL, picks up two and a half on the play. Yeah, he talked about how the, for the need to be physical, he studies the front seven as to how he wants to run during the week. And behind this offensive line, they've had a lot of success with Anderson. We expect to see more of Devontae Booker. Every time he's touched the ball, good things happen for Denver, including a touchdown last week and a 29-19 loss in Kansas City on Monday night. Second and seven. Latimer goes in motion. They stack those three receivers. Osweiler steps out of the pocket, flips it upstairs, and it's caught. Latimer climbing the imaginary ladder against the veteran Patrick Robinson. And the Broncos are on the move, first possession of the day. Yeah, good mobility by Osweiler in the pocket. Watches, he'll move to the right side. Sees the crossing route here by Latimer, and then Latimer does a great job of ripping the ball away from Robinson. Good for 19 yards. And the Broncos uh, off to a tremendous start here in Philly. Latimer has a 39-inch vertical, and he used every bit of it in the matchup against Robinson. Just shy of the 25. On the ground, Anderson gets hit down low. Three yard gain as Rasul Douglas slid down on CJ Anderson to make the play. Trevor Simeon, uh, last week was just a nightmare. Three interceptions. His last five games, eight interceptions. Yeah, very frustrating for the entire team. Three game losing streak. He threw six interceptions it's, uh, on Osweiler's mind today. Philadelphia rotating their defensive lineman right now. This is a second and seven with Thomas in motion. Osweiler fakes the handoff. Osweiler on the move. Hooks up with Thomas with a flag down. Thomas lost the ball at the end of the play. Play was ruled down. The ruling on the field is down by contact. It's not going to matter. Looks like a hold against Denver. Might have been Garrett Bowles, the rookie out of Utah. During the, the play, side. holding offense number 72. 10 yard penalty, replay second down. Yeah, Garrett Bowles is holding Vinnie Curry on the bootleg here. Watch this move by Curry as he rips underneath and is taken down by the rookie Bowles. Wipes out a really positive play that would have set up a very intriguing short yarded situation. Carson Wentz waiting for his opportunity to face this Denver D. Jamal Charles is now in for Denver. Charles had a key fumble last week against Kansas City, his former team. Second and 17 now for the Broncos. Osweiler, protection holds up. Osweiler lets it fly. Nearly intercepted. Rasul Douglas. The third round pick out of West Virginia. Almost had his third pick of the season. Yeah, had one against the Giants, once one against Carolina. And this one, he might have run a long way if he makes this catch. But Osweiler wanting his receiver to work his way back to him to cut down the distance. But that was a great read by Douglas. Eighth play of the drive. Four running plays so far. Three passes. Crowd is loud. Osweiler is dealing with it. On a third and 17. Rush coming. Osweiler. Incomplete. Sanders. The intended target for Denver. So that penalty called against Denver will make this a 52-yard attempt. Yeah, the pressure on Osweiler is delivered by Michael Kendricks there. But that pass, all it was going to do is make this a shorter field goal attempt for McManus. No win today in this direction. Brandon McManus is from the Philadelphia area, Hatfield, PA. 136 friends and family at the game. 52 yarder is good. McManus sticks it. And the Broncos are on the board first.
More first quarter action when we come back to Philly. Longest field goal of the season for McManus. Caps off a nine-play, 41-yard drive to open the game for Denver. And now McManus will kick it off to Barner and Clement for Philadelphia. And we talked about turnovers in regards to Simeon. As a team, the Broncos are minus 11 in turnover differential. Only Cleveland is worse at minus 12. A kick from McManus. Lower kick, but it gets the job done. Bounces through the back of the end zone, coming out to the 25-yard line for Philadelphia. Carson Wentz, the NFC Offensive Player of the Month in October. And he's really taken a major step forward in year two. And talking to Doug Peterson yesterday, he mapped out for us how Wentz must play today. Got to get the ball out of his hand quickly. He's got to recognize the blitz and know where his hot receiver is. And he's got a various snap counts to neutralize the quick first step of the pass rush, especially of Von Miller. Yeah, that's what Peterson made sure to mention. Have to keep Denver off balance. But he also added that Wentz prepares himself as any as much as anybody and as well as anybody he's ever been around. And he's been around some good ones. First play from scrimmage for Philly. Incomplete. He was looking for Brent Selleck. No Zach Ertz today for Wentz, who has been a security blanket for the young QB starting offense. And still questions for Vitae stepping in for Jason Peters. He'll have a bullseye on his back against one of the best pass rushes in the NFL. Selleck, the veteran, in his 11th year in the league, stepping in. Brandon Marshall stepped in front of that pass and deflected it away from Burton. LeGarrett Blount is in there on second down. It was Barner on first. Stood up, Blunt. Couldn't quite get the head of steam he was looking for, although they never brought him down. He's whistled down. Domatop Pecco is a big man, and he made that play. Still going strong in his 12th year in the NFL, 11 with Cincinnati. No Todd Davis once again. Zaire Anderson, a Philadelphia native, getting the start. And in the secondary, Darian Stewart had a pick last week in that loss to Kansas City. And they have excelled on third downs defensively. Just 25% best in the league. Pecco on the sideline right now for Denver. Will Parks is in at the nickel for the Broncos. This is a third and nine for Philadelphia. They stack the line. Wentz standing tall in the pocket. Delivers Trey Burton. Fourth year from Florida. It covers 14 yards with Roby and Stewart there defensively for Denver. Yeah, Stewart with man to man coverage. Coming from the inside, looking to double team here on Burton. But uh, quickly getting back to throw and getting it out of his hand is Carson Wentz. Well, right now, Dan, four plays, four different running backs. This is Jay Ajayi making his Philadelphia debut. Wentz operating out of the gun. First down at the 40-yard line for Philadelphia. Fake it to Ajayi. Wentz. Nice set up for Selleck. Selleck battles for extra yards. And he comes up just short of the first down. It's nine. Zaire Anderson, the tackle. NFL Today update. We're going to JB and Boomer. Opening drive success. How about the Colts? Jacoby Brissett right here. 45 yards on the money. The T.Y. Hilton. Colts take an early 7-0 lead over Tom Savage and the Houston Texans. Ian Eagle, Dan Fouts, and Evan Washburn. You know, such a rough injury, just not only because the way Watson had been playing, but the fact that the Texans have really built some excitement. And now Savage, who's still looking for his first NFL touchdown, by the way, flagged down. A jump from Shane Ray. Eagles Neutral fans are zone cheering. Infraction. Defense, number 56. That five-yard penalty results in a first down. Yeah, give uh, Carson Wentz some credit here for changing his cadence from the shotgun. Not easy to do. But he gets Ray, and quickly, Lane Johnson reaches out and touches him. <laughs> a little game of tag, huh? Yeah. It's like he was uh, flicking away a, a flea. <laughs> Don't go in there. 8-14 mark. Clock is moving here in the first quarter. And the Eagles are moving as well. Clement. Knifes it close to the 40-yard line. So we're already seeing the depth of this running back room in Philadelphia, the fact that they can rotate in Blunt or Clement or Barner or Ajayi or Smallwood. Yeah, it's kind of like the 
New England Patriots and what they do with their running back by committee situation. Blunt's the uh, choice now on second. And it's a top five rushing offense, or number five in the NFL at 129.2 yards per game. Second and six, Broncos in front of three up. And it off to Blunt. Now Garrett Blunt runs into a crowd. Inching closer to the 35-yard line, Zaire Anderson will get credit for the stop. It's a five-yard gain for Blunt. Denver is number one in team defense at allowing 261 yards per game. They're number two against the run. The number one team against the run, Philadelphia. So it's going to be hard to run the ball today. Well, you nailed it, Pam. <laughs> you are all over it. Is that film study? <laughs> is that what this called? <laughs> Dime package here for Denver. This is a third and one. Clement is in. Play clock down to three. Shifting over is Burton. Wentz on third down, in trouble. Wentz spins out of it. Wentz throws. Incomplete with a flag down at the 23-yard line. Going to be holding against the Broncos in the secondary. So Philly comes through on third down. Wentz got a little Houdini in him, doesn't he? Escaping the pressure of the pocket. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 21. Five-yard penalty, automatic. First down. It's the four-time Pro Bowler, Aqib Talib, called on the hold. And it keeps the drive alive. Yeah, the pressure here. Shane Ray with the chase. Brandon Marshall also with some pressure in there. But this spin move, protecting the ball with both hands as he looks to extend the play. Well, Wentz said it's a fine line. He will take a little time holding on to the ball, but he believes he can make a play. Flips it downfield. Oh, perfect touch to Alshon Jeffrey. Touchdown, Philadelphia. 32 yards. Wentz on target with a floater. Second time Jay Ajayi's in the game. They play action with him, draw the attention. And then after the play fake, Wentz has got his eyes down the field under pressure from Miller, but going right after Aqib Tlaib after Tlaib's penalty for holding that kept the drive alive. Fourth touchdown of the season for Alshon Jeffrey. 20th touchdown for Wentz. Leads the NFL. Extra point is through for Jake Elliott. The Eagles. Opening drive statement for Philly. They take a 7-3 lead. Wentz is lost. The Eagles go seven plays, 75 yards. It took just over four minutes. And Alshon Jeffrey, the former Chicago Bear, 32 yards on the receiving end from Wentz, who had a beautiful fake to sell it. Really a beautifully designed play by Frank Reich and Doug Peterson. Got... Uh, Keep to lead, peeking into the backfield. Elliott on the approach. Devontae Booker is deep. Now this is returnable. Booker takes it out of the end zone. Booker hit down low at the 20-yard line by McLeod, and a flag flies at the 24. Gene Steratore already three penalties against Denver, one against Philadelphia. Six and a half to play in this first quarter. Last time the Eagles were seven and one, it was 2004. They went to the Super Bowl that year. Illegal block in the back during the return, return team. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down, Denver. And that's four penalties Players now against the Broncos. Let's check out our Fouts focus, Dan. Well, here's Alshon Jeffrey. But watch Aqib Tlaib look, look into the backfield after this route here and then down the sideline. Faking the option play to Ajayi. And even the best in the game, as Aqib Tlaib is, sometimes you're guilty of peeking in the backfield. So Denver's opening field position now is backed up to the eight-yard line. 
Only one team this season has rushed for over 80 yards against the Philadelphia Eagles. It was the Kansas City Chiefs who had 112. That's the only loss the Eagles have suffered. Hand off to C.J. Anderson and a flag down. One yard pickup for Anderson. And lining up in the neutral zone was an Eagle, so this will be a free five yards for Denver. Um, defense offside, number 93 lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, replay, first down. It's Tim Jernigan who has been one of the very pivotal pickups that Howie Roseman made during the offseason. Jernigan acquired for a third round pick from Baltimore, and he and Fletcher Cox have been a lethal combination for Jim Schwartz's defense. They don't blitz a lot then. That's not Schwartz's style. 22 sacks on the year, primarily out of their defensive front four. He believes he can get the pressure from the front four, and he's been right. Stonewalled! C.J. Anderson hit by Vinny Curry, and Anderson is down. Loss of two on the play. Now Curry is giving uh, Grant Bowles some problems here, and C.J. Anderson needs some attention from the trainers as he had no shot at all after that handoff. We'll step aside with 6.02 to play in this first quarter. Add on the initial replay. We'll get more from Evan Washburn in a moment. This is a second and seven for Denver as Jamal Charles has stepped in for Anderson. Shotgun for Osweiler. 7-3 lead for Philadelphia. Charles gets swallowed up by Brandon Graham. And we check in with Evan. Well, and you're right. I think it looked worse than it actually appears. It's his left foot and ankle area. He just did some explosive cutting here on the sideline. He's currently on the bench, and he is probable, I was just told, to return. So good news for the Broncos. Yeah, he's lucky he got his knee out from underneath Vinny Curry, who goes about 280. Third and eight for Denver, deep in its own territory. We approach five minutes to go in this first quarter. Flagged down, and is again the against the Broncos. The left tackle Bowles. There was movement. Offense number 72. Five yard penalty. Third down. We haven't even played 10 minutes of this first quarter, and it's five penalties already against Denver. 20th pick overall. Spent just one year at Utah after transferring from a junior college. Third and 13 for the Broncos. Oswald out of his own end zone. Dumps it off. Charles after the catch. Takes it to the 10 for five yards. Brought down by Chris Long. Broncos will punt. Now we talked about the uh, turbo package for the Eagles pass rushing team. This is it. Three defensive ends in the game. Along with Fletcher Cox and the pressure on Osweiler forced him to dump it off short to Jamal Charles. Riley Dixon will punt it. Kenyon Barner standing at his own 48. Barner backpedals from the 42. And Barna could not break away from two special teamers as Latimer and Simmons combined to bring him down. A 48-yard punt, just three yards on the return. Wentz back on the field with a 7-3 lead when we come back. Eagles have scored 20 or more points in 12 straight games. That goes back to last season. It's the longest active streak in the NFL. And Carson Wentz is running this offense like a machine. 407 to play in the first quarter. 7-3 advantage for Philly. LeGarrette Blunt in the backfield. Excellent field position to open up from the 44. Moving pocket. Wentz is on time. Connects with Torrey Smith out of the perimeter against Aqib Tlaib. That's 11 yards on the hookup. Thursday. Seattle battles Arizona Thursday night football on NFL Network, NBC, and streaming live on Amazon Prime Video. Doug Peterson, he's going with the visor. It's really become his go-to look, Dan. Well, his wife likes him in a visor. <laughs> yes, he looks good. That's all that matters, really. That's right. 
3.35 to go here in the first quarter. Wentz connects with Selleck. Selleck breaks away from Marshall. Takes a shot from Stewart helping out. But that's bonus yards for Selleck after the catch. 15 yards in total. Yeah, it's about an 8-yard, 10-yard reception. But Selleck showing he's still got it. Filling in today along with Trey Burton for the injured Zach Hurts. Very really positive play as Wentz on first down rolls out to hit Torrey Smith and then a quick out route to tight end Selleck. They're at the 30 already. Wentz missed on his first pass. Since that point, he is five for five, including the touchdown to Jeffrey. Under three minutes to go now in the first. Burton, the motion man. Wentz, deep drop. Wentz will take a shot downfield. Separation, but could not hit Trey Burton. NFL Today update. We head back to New York. J.B. Boomer Esiason. Mm -hmm. Costly turnover leads to this. I'll tell you what, the Atlanta Falcons are playing really well. That's Mohamed Sanu. Quick out pattern. They go up 10-0. Matt Ryan, 8 of 11, 106 yards in the first quarter. Back to Ian Eagle. Dan Fouts. Well, we've been waiting for that offense to click. Of course, they lost Kyle Shanahan, now the head coach in San Francisco and Atlanta over 500, but the offense has not been dynamic like it had been in previous years. Second and 10 for Philly, it's Blunt. The stutter step from Blunt, three yard pickup going up the gut on Von Miller. He'll get credit for the stop. Well, Wentz has really benefited from having Doug Peterson as his head coach and Frank Reich as his offensive coordinator. A couple of career backup quarterbacks who understand the difficulties and the challenges of playing quarterback in this league and yeah, the way that Carson explained it they have a terrific relationship Reich and Peterson and he meets with Frank early in the week and then Wentz will meet with Doug individually later in the week they respect his opinion there's healthy dialogue between the three of them third and seven Wentz steps and throws ball got lodged loose no catch for Alshon Jeffrey, who's going to be short of the first down. Really big hit by Bradley Roby. Forced that ball out. Now for Peterson and Reich, the guys that have been around the game for a long time, and the unique insight they can bring for Carson Wentz. And Wentz told us that he expected a lot of himself in year two. He thought he would make a big jump. The game has slowed down. He's doing so much more pre-snap based on his understanding and film study in comfort zone. 45-yard attempt. Jake Elliott. He converts. And Philadelphia extends the lead. Two possessions. Two scores for Phillips plays just over two minutes. Elliott, 45-yard field goal for Philly. He's been a revelation. Caleb Sturgis goes on IR. Elliott steps in. And he's been... Fantastic for the Eagles. Game winners, long field goals, you name it. Elliott's done it. Kickoff to Booker. Well, that was very close. He will get the touchback, but not by much. Now he got his knee down in the end zone, and that's all it takes. But his forward momentum carried him across the goal line. Not sure why he didn't uh, take this one out. And whoop, there's the knee. And Booker remains on the field, so they will work him into the rotation here. Devontae Booker, last week, six carries, 40 yards, a touchdown, had a 26-yard run, had three catches for 14 yards. Booker in his second year from Utah. And C.J. Anderson had high praise for him, saying that Booker is fast and powerful. He has great hands. He's got a chance to be a legitimate number one running back in this league. Play fake. Osweiler's intercepted. Patrick Robinson. Out of bounds. The turnovers continue for Denver. It's an epidemic. Third pick of the season for the eight-year veteran, Patrick Robinson. Yeah, trying to squeeze it into Demarius Thomas on a slant route from this side of the field. 
It looked like it just a tremendous job of reading that route by the eight year veteran as he was inside of a receiver running a slant route which is unheard of. But he's got the experience that's 13 career interceptions now for Patrick Robinson. He's played with New Orleans the Chargers Indianapolis. That was not a big name signing during the offseason but he has played at an extremely high level for Jim Schwartz. And the Eagles take over at the 15 yard line of Denver. Two tight ends. Wentz. Incomplete. It's off the hand of Trey Burton in a matchup with the safety Darian Stewart. Second and 10 for Philly. When you go back to the interception, you think about the pressure that Osweiler has been on in on this uh, first quarter. And you can see he just made up his mind to throw that slant before the pressure could get to him. Didn't really read the fact that Robinson had better position than Thomas had. Well, we asked Vance Joseph what does Brock bring. He said leadership, command of the offense, keeping guys engaged, a calmness, and he's not going to turn it over. He just did. And off to Clement. Shake and bake move for no game. Parks and Stewart collaborate on the tackle. We're down to 128 to play in the first quarter. Philadelphia with a seven point lead. They can add to it here. Not only was it an interception, but it's an interception deep in your own end of the field, which gives the Eagles, who are nearly unstoppable here in the first quarter, tremendous field position. In the first quarter of games, Philadelphia has outscored the opponent 57 to 12. They get off to great starts, and it carries over. They're seven and one. Play action. Wentz underneath. Clement. Corey Clement takes it all the way. Touchdown, Eagles. Everything is working for Philly. Tremendous play by Clement as he was supposed to block Vaughn Miller. Watch Vaughn Miller left side of the screen. He goes right by Clement. Good read by Wentz on the screen. And it's a walk in. For the rookie Corey Clement. Sec second receiving touchdown for the Wisconsin product. But again, it shows you their versatility in the backfield, Dan. Blunt, Clement, Ajayi. And Philadelphia has put up 17 points in the first. We'll be back in 30 seconds after this from Lowe's. The moment you realize you have plenty of friends, just not plenty of space. At Lowe's, we have everything you need to get your home ready to enjoy the game next week. All projects have a starting point. Start with Lowe's. For the Denver Broncos, this is a very similar feeling that they've had for a number of weeks now where they put their defense in a tough position. Offense turns it over. And you look up on the scoreboard and ask yourself what happened here. Yeah, the, the field position obviously on the second score with a field goal. But then that interception again I go back to the pressure that this front four of the Eagles has been steadily putting on Osweiler. Kick off from Elliott and Booker will return it from the four. Booker trying to get to the outside, slow down at the 25 and chop down at the 29. Let's go back to look at the touchdown. Really a well conceived idea here as Clement is going to just chip block on uh, Vaughn Miller. But then check out number 79, Brandon Book Brooks, right here. Watch the block he gets, clears the way for the touchdown. They capitalize off the turnover. That's 18 turnovers now for Denver. Second most in the league behind Cleveland coming into the week with 21. Two tight ends in this formation. Green and Hireman. Booker. Chewing up real estate. Delvante Booker carries it across the 35 for eight and a half. Nigel Bradham who's had a very good year for Philadelphia with a tackle. Now in talking to Mike McCoy offensive coordinator about Booker. He says he brings a little bit of juice there. You can see the jump cut 
then up the field. Had that injury in training camp. He's just now getting back to full speed. But McCoy likes the chances with him on certain mismatches as Fowler needs attention now. Well, it's Benny Fowler, the third, limping off to the sideline for Denver. Second and one. Booker remains in there. Janovich in front of him. To the outside. Booker makes a cut. And they swarm on Booker, led by Derek Barnett, rookie out of Tennessee. The 14th overall pick, no gain. End of the first quarter. 17-3, Philly. This is the NFL on CBS. Top five teams in scoring differential this season. Rams number one, Jacksonville two. There's Philadelphia at plus 9.5, followed by Kansas City and New Orleans. All of these teams would be playoff teams right now in the NFL. So the numbers now for Philly, what they've done in the first quarter, exceptional. They've also done it in the third quarter. So coming out of the halftime break, they jump on team. C.J. Anderson is back in, and Anderson has got a first down, but a flag thrown late at the 36. Michael Kendricks with the takedown. Holding offense number 65. 10-yard penalty replay. Third down. Now these have been crushers for Denver. That's six penalties costing the Broncos 45 yards. That one against Ronald Leary. Right there on the edge, right uh, where Janovich is going to lead block for Anderson. You can see the the uh, arm around Malcolm Jenkins. Jenkins is the leading tackler for this Philly defense from the safety position. And he's been a great leader for this Philadelphia team for a number of years. Won a Super Bowl with New Orleans. Uh, he's so versatile. He can play safety, nickel, also plays a little linebacker in the dime. Now it's a third and 12. Oxwaller trying to get everybody on the same page. Isaiah McKenzie is in there for Denver. They handle the rush initially. Oxwaller lets it fly. Almost intercepted. There were three Eagles in the area. With McKenzie, the intended target, Corey Graham, 11 year veteran, got his hands on it. This is a desperation heave by Oxwaller. Three Eagles flying to this football. Graham has it, but it's knocked out of his hands by Robinson's helmet. And McKenzie, by the way, is five foot eight. So you're tossing it up there. Yeah, he's got a big vertical though, right? <laughs> he does. He needs one in that case. Riley Dixon, the punter. Kenyon Barner goes back to the 17. Barner, a zigzag caught from behind. Couldn't break away from Latimer. Eight yard return after the 55 yard punt. Tremendous first quarter for Carson Wentz. A couple of touchdown passes. Alshon Jeffrey on 32 yards out. Then on a beautifully executed screen pass to Corey Clement following his blockers into the end zone for 15 out. Six for 10 for Wentz, 96 yards in those two scores. Eagles take over at the 25 yard line. This is the 13th all time meeting between these two teams. Eagles 7 and 5 against Denver. Now Carson Wentz. It's been a lot of green this year. Although the Eagles are wearing all black today. Smith goes in motion. They take the jet sweep. They give it to Ajayi who battles his way. Across the 30 yard line for six. Ron Miller hanging on. NFL Today update. JB, former Siasen. Something you don't see every day. Well, it's third and 33. The Giants are playing a prevent defense. You got a slot receiver screen to Robert Woods. You have their left tackle and guard leading him down the field. It leads to a touchdown. When it rains, it pours at MetLife Stadium 17 7. Rams over Giants. Back to Iron Eagle. Now what a season the Rams have put together guys five and two one of the biggest surprises in the NFL second and four. It's a giant. Spilled out Vaughn Miller hemming in in for a gain of just one for Jay Ajayi. Now his specialty is rushing the passer but he can play the edge as well as anybody as he fights off the big tackle Lane Johnson. And keeps a Jai right at the line of scrimmage. Imperative now for the Broncos to prevent the Eagles from getting a first down here. 
It is a third and three for Philly. Blunt now on the backfield. Like a little emotion. There was a hole there for Blunt, and then Denver filled it quickly with Brandon Marshall. Tremendous tackle by Brandon Marshall. As it looked like uh, Blunt was on his way to a first down. You want to look at a form tackle. Watch out. He wraps him up, takes his legs, drives him back. Absolutely perfect. And just so needed for this Denver football team. First punt of the day for Donnie Jones. I mentioned McKenzie. He muffed a punt early in the third quarter last week. And this time he brings it in. McKenzie makes his move. McKenzie's got big time speed. To the outside, McKenzie can fly. And he's tripped up as he crosses the 45-yard line. Corey Graham on special teams makes the play. Denver needed something, and they get a boost. 43-yard return for McKenzie. Tremendous change of direction there. Now he picks up the picket wall and gets down, but the tackle by a shoelace by Corey Graham. Watch him reach out. Total dive and gets his toe to trip him up. So they put the offense in a good position for the first and 10 of the Philadelphia 43 yard line. Denver trailing 17 to 3, still early in the second quarter. CJ Anderson in the backfield for Denver. Last time they had a four game losing streak was 2010 when they lost five in a row. Osweiler. Watches nobody home and nobody close to Marius Thomas and Jalen Mills. The matchup downfield. Well, for Osweiler so far, three of eight, 38 yards to pick. Wentz is six of ten for 96 yards and a pair of TDs. The Broncos went 11 and 10 the last two seasons with Simeon in the starting lineup. Osweiler getting the opportunity today. Paxton Lynch not 100%. Demarius Thomas the catch and hit by Patrick Robinson short of the first down. Simeon is the backup quarterback. Paxton Lynch is inactive. Lynch suffered that right shoulder injury in the preseason August 26th and has limited practice since that point. Lynch is a big guy, six foot seven, 26th pick overall in last year's draft from Memphis, and they still aren't sure what they have with Lynch. Second catch of the day for Demarius Thomas. This is a third and two, manageable for Denver. Osweiler on time. Emmanuel Sanders, first down. No, it's ruled incomplete. The back official claimed that he trapped it. Now let's take a look here. He's got it there. One foot down, two feet. Taking it to the ground, and the ball comes loose. Well, that's where it popped free. Did he keep control of it? It'll be interesting to see if the uh, Broncos challenge this call. Right in front of their bench, so and Joseph had a good fans. Joseph had a good look at it. Now they're going to go for a 53-yard field goal. They are not going to challenge this at all. They, you saw the ball moving there. Yep. McManus from 53 yards away. McManus connects. It's Brandon McManus once again. He has accounted for all of Denver's points. They cut into the lead. Philadelphia in front here in the second. Denver had to settle for a field goal attempt. McManus knocked it through. Emmanuel Sanders thought he had the first down. And they had to make a decision quickly. Now Sanders was stewing along the sideline. As the kickoff comes from McManus to Barner. Coming out to the 25-yard line. And coming up Thursday on CBS, buckle up for the new drama. SWAT, Shamar Moore stars in a new episode Thursday at 10, 9 Central, only CBS. That's good reason why Sanders was 
Smith's doing on the sidelines. You know, after two catches, you're now a runner after two steps. Here's the catch. One, two, now he's a runner, and that's basically a fumble as he goes out of bounds. That's a completed pass. And not an incomplete because doesn't have to take it to the ground and control it after taking two steps. But don't you feel like even analyzing replays now, week in and week out, it's hard to decipher what's considered a catch in the eyes of the officials and what's not anymore. Yeah, your phrase that paralysis by analysis is so apt. This play there that time. It's and Shelby Harris. Harris, the backup defensive lineman, knocking it down. Carson Wentz is a big guy, 6'5", 237. And Harris went upstairs for the deflection. He got his 290 pounds up pretty high. He's only six foot two, so that's a heck of a play by the third year player. Seventh round pick by the Oakland Raiders back in 2014. He's been on the practice squad for the Raiders and the Cowboys. This is now a second and ten for Philly. 17 6 lead for the Eagles. Best record in the NFL at seven and one. Belong to the backfield. So far, just 11 rushing yards for Blunt. Wentz straight back. Wentz uncorks one. Incomplete, Jeffrey. And the Broncos surrounded him with Chris Harris. Now Chris Harris with great coverage as uh, Wentz looking for Jeffrey on the hook route. He puts it right where he wants to, right in the hands of Jeffrey, but the right-hand punch out by Harris causes the incompletion. Tremendous reaction by Harris. Jeffrey playing on a one year $14 million deal for the Eagles. Signed as a free agent from Chicago. Corey Clement now sets up to the side of Wentz. Dime package here for Denver. Third down to 10 or more yards. They've been the best in the NFL. And they just coaxed Denver potentially into another penalty. Gene Steratore will sort it out. That could be two against Shan Neutral Shane Neutral zone yeah. defense. Number 56. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Shane Ray bit. Yeah, he's still feeling his way back. Played uh, last week for the first time. Had three tackles against Kansas City, but it's two offside penalties. So Clement remains in there. On a third and five for Philly after the penalty. Wentz. Plenty of time. Great hands by Jeffrey. And a penalty marker down as Jeffrey has the first down for Philadelphia. 14 yards on the pass play. That's a big time throw. Defense number 29. That penalty is declined. The result of the play. First down. Roby was claiming that uh, Jeffrey pushed off on him. He was going a little up tempo here. Here's that big time throw you were talking about, Bert. Shotgun for Wentz. And a new set of downs to work with. Clement gets devoured. Derek Wolf along with Will Parks. It's a loss of one on the play. Yeah, you look at the numbers on Carson Wentz, Dan, and just go through NFL history. The only players to win an MVP within their first two years in the league. Kurt Warner did it. Dan Marino did it. And Jim Brown won it his rookie year and his second year. Now he's the greatest of all time. A couple of Hall of Famers in Warner and Marino. Good start for Carson Wentz. Second and 11. Play clock winding down. Went to the pocket. Unloads to Selleck. Selleck's got a blocker. Ridden down by Shaquille Barrett. It's another Philadelphia first down. 15 yards. No Zach Ertz. Selleck and Burton stepping forward for Philly. That's three catches now for Selleck. Now watch how he's going to pick up the blocker on the outside. Aguilar on a keep to lead. Heads up by Aguilar to get that block so Selleck could pick up the first. Now at the 42 of the Broncos, we've got a 9.25 to play first half. Wentz looks. Wentz throws it away. And a flag down. 
Zach Kerr spinning wins to the ground may have drawn the penalty. Or is this going to be intentional grounding the officials talking about it. I don't think that was roughing the quarterback. The ball ended up back at the 40 yard line. I'm not sure if somebody took the ball and chucked it. So Wentz didn't have a receiver. He got slammed down. The ball ended up in the hands of Darian Stewart, but now the ball is at the 40 yard line back on the other side of the field. And two different penalties. I think they're going to get Darian Stewart for delay a game by throwing that ball off the field. That's a herd of zebras, isn't it? It is five. They're multiplying. <laughs> There are two fouls on the play, both against the defense. On sportsmanlike conduct, defense number 26, penalties declined. Also personal foul roughing the passer, defense number 92. That penalty will be accepted. 15 yards, automatic, first down. So they get Kerr for that. This was Stewart. They just tossed the ball over there. And he threw it back at Wentz. That's why it's unsportsmanlike conduct. But in Kerr's defense, he has no idea that Wentz got rid of this ball. He thinks he's getting himself a sack. Do you agree with either call? I definitely agree with the uh, penalty on Stewart, but not the penalty on on Kerr. You can't be throwing the football around it at your opponent like that. So the line of scrimmage will now be the 27 yard line for Philadelphia had a new set of downs. Kerr is still disagreeing with the officials view. Corey Clement in the backfield on a four receiver set for Philly. Wentz. Lost it. Touchdown. To Trey Burton. Carson Wentz with a strike. That's number three for Wentz in the first half. Well, he gets the mismatch he wanted. Tight end on the linebacker, Marshall. Check out possession here. This is real close. He never loses control of the ball as he hits the ground as he squeezes it between his legs and brings it into his stomach. The previous play is under review. Well, it has to be because it's a scoring play, but this one is a. Uh, we've seen so many questionable calls. Did that look a little bit like the Jets and uh, Austin Severian Jenkins? It does. Anytime there's movement, there's going to be a question mark. To me, Burton secured it. Yeah, and he got the right knee down as he was sliding out of bounds. The confidence of Carson Wentz, it's not just that he makes confident throws, it's the decision making as well. He makes the right decision time and time and time again. Well, and he moved the safety out of the way so that with a little pump fake. So the mismatch or the one on one with the linebacker is what he was looking for. You know, with Zach Ertz out of the uh, game with a hamstring injury, if this catch stands this will be Burton's third catch of the day to go along with Selleck's the other tight end third cat three catches. This is an extended view for Steratore. Again coming into the spotlight what's a catch what's not a catch in the NFL. Yeah he didn't catch it in the traditional way but he caught it. I think the question is whether or not he had control of it as he was falling out of bounds. Normally the longer they stay on headset. That usually means there's going to be a reversal After review. 
The ruling on the field stands. In this case, Sterator took care of business rather quickly. They looked at three angles, and the points stand for Philly. Great pass and a great adjustment and a real awareness of where the ball was on his body by Trey Burton. That is 13 straight games now for Philadelphia with 20 or more points, the longest active streak in the league. Extra point is good from Jake Elliott. The Eagles highlight after highlight. Win against Sandwich. That particular human will win every time. He's got a tapeworm. He's a professional eater. And this is a professional scoring outfit in Philadelphia. Elliott kicks it off. Over the head of Devonte Booker. Out to the 25-yard line for Denver. Carson Wentz is 9 of 15, 152 yards. He now has 22 touchdowns on the season. Three in the first half. And offensively, the Eagles have gained 173 yards in total offense. Broncos best in the NFL allow just 261 a game. Denver has not had a first down in its last four drives. They trail 24 to 6. That's why they're on a give. Nothing there for Jamal Charles. Brandon Graham there to greet him. We check in with Evan Washburn. And Dan, that frustration defensively starting to boil over a little bit. Chris Harris Jr. brought the group together. Now this is constructive, but some passionate words for that entire unit. They asked for a fair game from their offense coming into this game. And while Osweiler has turned it over once, they've probably been the biggest problem in this first half, and you can tell it's bothering them. Yeah, we asked Von Miller about it. Is there any division between the offense and defense? He said no. He knows that the offense holds themselves to a high standard. They care about what they do. Everybody in the locker room knows that. But the frustration level seems to go to another level each week. Demarius Thomas with the catch. And it is enough for a first down collision with Kendricks and McLeod. 11 yard pickup through the air. But it's been the story for two and a half years now. It has. Now they won a Super Bowl. And with an unbelievable defense, and they have many of the same pieces. And they're currently ranked number one overall in team defense. Now the number that could be misleading is how many points you give up. They're 13th in that category, but they give up points often because of the offense. And off the booker. That's a shot. Brandon Graham got him down low, and Malcolm Jenkins up high. Four yard gain for the young running back Booker. But it's uh, important for Osweiler and the Broncos to really just reset their offense. Go back to the success they had on that first drive when they went down and got a field goal. And stick with the game plan. Don't uh, totally get away from it. A lot of time here left in the first half. Denver has given up the most or second most points of the NFL off of turnover, so that adds to the equation for Denver. Osweiler in the pocket, in stride, hooks up with Thomas. Just short of midfield, it's another first down for the Broncos. Ten yard pickup. That's four catches now for Thomas. He's such a reliable target over the middle because he reaches out in front of McLeod there to make that catch and come. Get another first down. Four catches now for Thomas for 42 yards, and that's the type of play they need from him and Emmanuel Sanders. There is Mike McCoy calling the plays for Denver, hey, former head coach for the Chargers for four years. Vinny Curry just went to the sideline in some serious pain. He's being checked out on the Philadelphia side. Osweiler launching deep. It's caught by Sanders. Sanders inside the 20 in a matchup against the linebacker Joe Walker and now Sanders is limping he's been dealing with that ankle injury the last two weeks. Well, Sanders uh, watch his legs here as Joe Walker is going to fall right on that right leg. But he uh, Sanders before that ball got to him he pushed off on Walker. and That gave him the separation to make the catch. And there is yards. Curry. Looking at Vinnie Curry's leg. 
first down. Booker hit from the side by Derek Barnett, who steps in for Curry. It's a three yard gain for Booker. Curry up on his feet. Benny Curry, who grew up an Eagles fan, back playing in a 4 3 defense where he excels. Well, that's something that Fletcher Cox mentioned as well, how much he's enjoyed playing in Jim Schwartz's defense. Sanders is up on his feet and moving better along that Denver sideline. Second and six. Out of the gun for Osweiler. Seventh play of the drive. Osweiler fires high and incomplete. A.J. Derby with the safety Malcolm Jenkins. Let's check it with Evan Washburn. Well, guys, the two injuries. Let's start with Vinnie Curry. The athletic trainers and team doctors working on that left knee for Curry. Nothing official. He's walking with an obvious limp at this point. Sanders, remember, it is that right ankle. He's back on the field right now. He told us going into this game, 85% he was going to take a pain injection shot before the game. He's just going to fight through it. Now Sanders, one of the guys that talked about the chemistry that he feels with Brock Osweiler and that there's a new energy to the offense. It just hasn't revealed itself in the scoreboard. Held to two field goals. Third and six for Denver. Osweiler out of the pocket. Osweiler stops and throws. He's got Thomas for a first down inside the 10. Demarius Thomas with a third down grab. And it's first and goal for the Broncos. Now that's a crossing route, obviously. A little bit of a rub play there with no contact, so it's legal. But Thomas uh, thought he could get into the end zone. He really kind of tripped himself there at about the five yard line, or he might have gone right by Nigel Bradham. A lot better drive for the Broncos, better pass protection by Osweiler, for Osweiler. From the gun. It's a give to inside Anderson. Brandon Graham with a tackle. Two yard pickup. Vinny Curry is back in there for Philadelphia. That's amazing to see the pain he was in. Trainers are working on him. It just shows you the toughness of these football players at times. Their ability to handle pain and get over it quickly. Second goal. Denver needs it badly. Trailing 24 to 6 with under four minutes to go in this first half. Give us to Anderson. Hit down low by Watkins. Anderson was trying to cut it to the outside. Watkins denied him. Well, he's playing like he's a linebacker here, and he's just going to set the edge. Anderson's going to run right to him. Good read by Watkins, and then going low. And the 225 pound tailback. Sammy Watkins brother Jalen Watkins in his second stint with the Philadelphia Eagles. 11th play of the drive. It's third and goal for Denver. Osweiler through the air. And nobody home. Cody Latimer in the area with Jalen Mills. Fourth down, Broncos. So no critical mistake for Denver on offense, but once again, a field goal attempt for the Broncos. And again, that tremendous uh, coverage on that route intended for Emmanuel Sanders, the corner on that side, jumping inside, similar to when Patrick Robinson did earlier to pick off Osweiler. 24 yard attempt. McManus. Angles it through, and it's 24 to 9, Philly. 3:03 left. Second quarter. 3:03 remaining in this first half, and McManus will kick it off for Denver. Broncos have failed to score more than 19 points in five straight games. Coming out to the 25-yard line for Philly. And coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. J.B., Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower, the latest NFL scores and highlights all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Carson Wentz, he was 5'8 as a freshman in high school. You're kidding. He then grew to 5'11 in his sophomore year, 6'3 yeah. as a junior, 
Six five as a senior. All he wanted to be was six foot. That, that's the number he wanted to hit. His brother was six two, but his brother was six two in the eighth grade and then never grew again. Growth they love, you know? <laughs> yeah. The growth spurt changed things for Carson Wentz. Wentz is on target. He gets Mac Hollins involved. He's averaging over 20 yards per catch. Hollins, the rookie out of North Carolina, set a school record for yards per catch for the Tar Heels. Look at this timing. One step back, already out of his break, is Hollins. Easy reception on first down. Six different receivers that Wentz has worked into the action in this first half. 160 yards through the air, three touchdowns for Wentz, and a 24-9 lead for Philadelphia. Second and two. Running play for Ajayi. And it's enough for a first down. Jay Ajayi said he was surprised when Miami made the deal, was feeling a whirlwind of emotion, but he's ready to put his head down and get to work as an eagle. Three carries for nine yards. Setting new blunt a little bit because they played in the same division, New England and Miami. Vaughn Miller looking for an edge. That's three times now that Wentz has used his cadence to draw off the Bronco off Defense, sides. Number 58, five yard penalty, first down. You want cadence? Yeah. We got cadence. Yeah, he had a, line, a tight end lined up on that this side is, of the formation, the so he knew he had to get a jump because he's been frustrated not getting to Wentz so far here in the first half. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Progressive Insurance, handing off big savings to you. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Eagles have a chance to use up the final two minutes of this first half, put more points on the board, then get the football to start the second half. They have a first and five with two minutes to play. Second quarter. And up to Ajayi. Running lane for Ajayi. Sticks the helmet down. He's got a first down. Legs churning to the 46. Vitai and Wisniewski on that left side creating space. 14-yard rip. Yeah, a great job by Wisniewski, too, because after he makes this double-team block, he's going to come off on Marshall, and then he's going to find a Jai and push a Jai down the field, which is totally legal and really smart. Well, Jay Ajayi, we were told, he line up for about 12 plays. This is a big one. Ajayi! Looking for the angle, Ajayi dives! Touchdown, Eagles! Jay Ajayi in his Philadelphia debut. Dynamic run for Ajayi. And again, following his blockers, but there's no Bronco anywhere near until at about the two-yard line as Stewart comes over. Question is, did he get the ball inside the pylon? Ball in the outside hand reaches over. The officials had to look at each other to see if he crossed the plane. He went airborne. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. It will be reviewed. Ajahi had not gotten in the end zone this year for Ooh. Miami. So coming into the game, Ajahi had 152 touches without a touchdown. That's his longest run of the year was 21 before that. If it stands, that's good for 46. Did he curl inside the pylon is the question. If not, they're looking at a first and goal at the one. Stewart ranging over. It's impossible to tell, really. Great effort by Stewart. This may just uh, delay the inevitable. The ball placed inside the one. One of the questions after the Ajayi move, how will these guys coexist? What will Ajayi's role be on this team? 
They lost Darren Sproles to a broken arm and a torn ACL. Big weapon for Philadelphia, not just on offense, but on special teams. And you notice that the After review, the ruling on the field stands. Ajayi tastes the end zone for the first time this year. And it's interesting in the two minute offense which is you know difficult to pick up for any team for any new player to a team a is in there two big runs obviously the yep. touchdown run but the faith that Peterson and Frank Reich have in him really paid off. And this is what GM Howie Roseman visualized that Ajayi would provide a different dynamic in that backfield. 31 to 9 Philadelphia will be back in 30 seconds for the latest NFL scores and highlights all coming up on the Verizon halftime report a lot to smile about in Philadelphia right now the way this Eagles team has performed through the first half of the season this is game nine for Philly they've got a bye week coming up their new addition Jay Ajayi takes it to the end zone on a 46 yard run. They put a 31 points in the first half. Long strides from Booker. And he is chopped down at the 22-yard line. So a minute 15 left. Brock Osweiler of the Broncos offense with two timeouts remaining. And remember, 32 seconds into the game, they called a timeout. So they only have two to work with. This game will be the midway point of Denver's season. And They've not been under 500 at the midway point of the season since 2011. They were three and five at that point under John Fox. They finished eight and eight. First down for the Broncos. And a big hole here in Philly. Osweiler out of the pocket. Juggled. That incomplete. Michael Kendricks with a hit on C.J. Anderson. Started running with it after he had complete control. It's a couple of times now that Osweiler's just run right out of the pocket to get away from the pressure, buy some time. Good play by Kendricks to uh, prevent that completion. Osweiler, big frame, 6'7", 240, was well, the basketball player in his youth, and he sacked. Osweiler goes down, the pocket collapsed. Cox was in there. Vinny Curry for Philadelphia. Now this is a defensive lineman's dream in this defense of Jim Schwartz. Don't worry about a thing. Just go after the quarterback. Here's Cox, number 91, working against Leary. And Philadelphia uses a timeout with 104 to play first half. That's really a smart move, too. Call that timeout. Let's check in with Evan Washburn. Evan? Well, guys, just a quick injury update. Middle linebacker Joe Walker is currently in the concussion protocol over here on the sideline. He appears to be okay, but they're still reviewing a play middle of the second quarter. They're giving him his helmet back now, but again, in this new world of concussion protocol, keeping him off the field there, but again, looks like he's getting back in. And Walker is in for Jordan Hicks, who's done for the season with a ruptured Achilles. And Hicks has been a difference maker for this Philadelphia defense. Third and 18. Truck ball. Thomas had some room in front of him. Wouldn't have been enough for a first down. But just an indicator of how this afternoon has gone for Denver. Well, and the incomplete pass stops the clock. So the field position for the Eagles at the end of the first half here is going to be excellent. And they got a couple of timeouts. One minute to play. Barner moves forward, returnable from the 36. And he got crushed at the 41, flag thrown on the far side of the field. Benny Fowler, the third, in there with the special teams at 50 yard punt, a six yard return. An illegal block against the Eagle return team. During the return, legal block in the back. Return team number 54. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Philadelphia. 
Osweiler is 8 of 18, 108 yards and a pick. Wentz, 10 of 16, 160 yards and three touchdowns. Philadelphia will have an opportunity to score again. Here we talked about maybe the Eagles using up all the clock in the two minute warning. They went out, scored, stopped Denver, and now got the football back with 51 seconds left. And they'll have the football to start the third. It's like a bang, bang, potential another bang. Bang, that, that would be three bangs. Wentz from the gun. Hand it off to Clement. Clement just keeps on going. Shane Ray combining with Brandon Marshall to bring him down. Six yard run for Clement. And that used a lot of time though. Yeah, they, they're not in a rush here. Yeah, maybe Philadelphia had a different philosophy. Because they still have two timeouts, they're not using them. Second and four. 89 rushing yards for Philadelphia as a team. Wentz will throw it. And hooks up with Alshon Jeffrey down the field. Carson Wentz with another strong throw. Well, Jeffrey goes 6 3, so you can put the ball over the top of the linebacker Marshall there. Confident that uh, with his catching radius and strong hands, Jeffrey is going to haul it in. Now to get uh, Jake Elliott in range, remember the 61 yarder. I know Wentz will never forget it. <laughs> well, they need is about 13 yards to get to that target line right now for Philly. And Corey Clement remains in there. And with the two timeouts, they can throw the ball anywhere on the field. 15 seconds left. Wentz. Pump and throw through the hands of Jeffrey. That would have gotten it done. Instead, it's incomplete with 10 seconds to play. Now, this is a couple now that Jeffrey has let go right through his hands. It's a, almost a carbon copy. Mimeograph. A what? All those, all those things that you, <laughs> you don't know about anymore. No. I've heard of mimeographs. I just haven't experienced that myself. It, it was purple ink. <laughs> yeah. Did you go to the library with Microfish? Was that also part of your repertoire? No, that was, that was after my time. Two. Second and ten. Ten seconds to play. Wentz. Incomplete. Nelson Aguilar, intended receiver, only six seconds remain on the clock. And Wentz had more time than he thought as he stepped under the pocket. The rush kind of cleared away, but he hurried to throw to Aguilar. You know, he acknowledged to us that there is a balance in holding on to the ball and taking some of those hits, but he said he, he's had that never say die attitude going back to his days as a kid playing football. That's just his mentality. He's a head first quarterback. They need 13 yards, and they have to do it in five seconds. Wentz to Jeffrey. It's not 13. I bet they wish they had hurried after that uh, run yeah. by Clement on first down. It just seemed as if they were conceding that the half was over, but all of a sudden they got recharged and seemed interested. They have an extra offensive lineman now with four seconds left. Well, with Wentz's arm, he can easily reach the end zone for the Hail Mary. They only have the one receiver though in the formation. And Wentz just skies it over the head of Alshon Jeffrey, and that'll do it. End of the first half. Philadelphia all over Denver. 31 to 9. The Eagles trying to extend their winning streak to seven in a row. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local station. So Verizon and Google have teamed up on the pixel in Philadelphia where the Eagles lead the Broncos 31 to 9. Let's take a look at our first half heroes presented by Downey and it's Wentz to Burton. He had three touchdown passes in the first half. This one a heck of an acrobatic catch by Trey Burton from 27 yards out. But it's been all Eagles offense and defense. 
Ian Eagle along with Dan Fouts, Evan Washburn down on the sidelines. Philadelphia has been as good as advertised. Seven and one first half of the season. Carson Wentz, MVP candidate, and he's looked every bit the part that you look for in a big time quarterback. It seems like it's all working for Philly. Yeah. They bring Jay Ajayi in. All he does is go 46 yards for a touchdown here at the end of the first half. So it's all working for the Eagles. That's why they're on the verge of being eight and one. Well, the Denver Broncos, it's not working right now. Three straight losses for Denver. Broncos make a change at quarterback, but it's been a similar result on offense. A struggle to produce touchdowns, a turnover in that first half for Osweiler. And Denver, in a deep hole, they will kick it off to Philadelphia. Kenyon Barner is the beat man. Brandon McManus. We'll get this second half started for Denver. Broncos 126 total yards in the first half and Philly puts up 266. Denver has allowed 261 per game this season. Eagles top that in the first half alone. Barter. He's brought down at the 25 yard line by Jamal Carter on special teams. Let's check in with Evan Washburn down on the field. Evan? Well, and let's start with a conversation with Vance Joseph. His two priorities in this second half eliminate the penalties. Nine for 70 yards in that first half. Feels like they're self inflicted. Defensively, they have to find the tight ends. It's been a problem all season long, and even with Ertz out of the lineup, they've had trouble defending those guys. As for Peterson, most pleased with the resiliency of his team, the pass protection, just one sack allowed. And the approach doesn't change, guys, in this second half, despite the score. They're going to keep attacking through the air. Well, Peterson had nice words to say about Ajayi, called him smart, said he picked up the system quickly. They were looking at it from a long-term view. It doesn't matter who's running it. It's been effective. Clement! Corey Clement into Denver territory. And a flag down late. Clement had already done the damage to the tune of 37 yards. Well, Gene Steratore has been given a workout on the microphone. Holding offense number 17. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. After enforcement of the foul, it is still a first down for Philadelphia. Yeah, the penalty happened way down the field as Clement was going for that 37. Here's the hold right here on a keep to leave. Heck of a play by Tlaib to make the tackle while he's being pulled upon by Jeffrey. So a spot foul. It is back at the 41 yard line of Philadelphia. They have an extra offensive lineman in here. 28 yard run. And then the 10 yard penalty. Second half underway. Well, the Eagles comfortably in front, 31 to 9. It's Blunt dishing out some punishment. Blunt takes it to the 46. Brooks and Wisniewski up front. And here are the official numbers from that first half. They scored seven points off of turnovers. Denver had nine penalties, costing them 70 yards in the first half alone. Wentz was 12 of 21 for 173 in those three scores. No picks. Offensive line doing a great job. Balance running attack. Ajayi five carries. Clement five carries. Blunt five carries. And all have been effective. This is Blunt. Falling forward. Didn't need much for that first down. Von Miller over there defensively, but it'll depend on the spot here. Looks like he's about a half a foot short. Yep. Need to get to the 45. Marcus Johnson is in. First year wide out from Texas. And Carson Wentz, six foot five, plows through himself. He can see as he lined up behind the center, he uh, was crouched down low. And Brandon Marshall thinking that uh, he had a shot at the six foot five. Wentz goes right over the top. Wentz ducked under him. You can see the eyes of Marshall expecting the quarterback sneak, but he just went too high. 
So new set of downs for Philadelphia. Carson Wentz came in as the second leading rusher on the Eagles this season behind LeGarrette Blunt. Fake it. Wentz. Incomplete. And the direction of Alshon Jeffrey at second and ten for Philly. So we mentioned their dominance in the first quarter. Same can be said for the third quarter. They've outscored opponents 58 to 30 in the third quarter this season. Yeah, that means that uh, obviously to start the game, their game plan and their first 15 are solid. But then the adjustments at halftime have really paid off as well. Shorty, shorty. 120. Only thing they haven't had, they haven't had a 100 yard receiver in the game yet this season. Alshon Jeffrey will have an opportunity to get there. That's his fifth catch of the day. Brandon Marshall with the tackle. It covers 17 yards. He now has 80 yards overall for Philly. And it's just no pressure at all on Wentz as he can step into this throw. As Jeffrey gets inside on the slant route on a keep to lead. Jeffrey had eight targets last week. He and Wentz, that chemistry is developing. Jeffrey had a touchdown. 53 yarder last week. And Jeffrey with a touchdown here today. One of three for Wentz. Ajayi is known as a violent runner, and that is a positive in this case. That's yeah, a draw play. It's going to get in behind Brandon Brooks here. And you're going to see some of that power. As he rips through a tackle there by Shelby Harris. Uh, there's an injured eagle. Lane Johnson is down on one knee at the 25 yard line. Johnson, one of the best right tackles in the NFL. Now in his fifth year in the league. He was actually a high school quarterback. How big was he in fifth grade? <laughs> I think he was 6'6 in fifth grade. And he just did all his growing in his first 10 years on earth. Well, it's good to see him off the field under his own power. Well, the Eagles, of course, playing without Jason Peters. He's done for the year. Big hit on that left side. Nine time pro bowler torn ACL and MCL. And a bye week for Philadelphia couldn't be better timed than having it next week. Second and four, Brock Osweiler, eight of 18 today, 108 yards and a pick. Two tight ends, Selleck and Burton on second down. Ripping through is Blunt. And a first down run. Eagles fans cheering along. He becomes a fan favorite because of runs like that. Yards after contact, 10 yards overall for Blunt. Well, 96 is Shelby Harris. He's got a free shot right there at Blunt. But Blunt easily runs through the arm tackle. And then after contact and with a little help again from Wisniewski. He gets hit there and he's going to pick up another five to seven yards after contact. Yeah, good blocking up front. Wisniewski, Kelsey Brooks, Sayamalo is in at right tackle replacing Lane Johnson. First down inside the 15. They keep it on the ground. Ajayi slammed down. Ajayi secures the football and picks up five yards. And the big thing here is, is with this type of attack, you, it's what they talked about. Take time off the clock. A little bit of a tough handoff there as uh, Ajayi has to reach for the ball and bring it in before contact. But uh, this is going to be a steady diet of the power running of Blunt and Ajayi. Now the Eagles offensive line is dominating, even down two starters. Johnson has left the field. On second down. Tenth play of the drive. Oh, nothing there for Ajayi. Von Miller was ready for him. Let's check in with Evan Washburn. Well, and you mentioned it, Lane Johnson in the locker room. The area of concern appeared to be his lower back. He injured himself earlier in that drive and had to be taken off the field by Gene Steratore. He wanted to get back in, but again, they took him immediately 
to the locker room. As soon as I have something official, I'll let you know. All right. Thanks, Evan. 9.25 to go in this third quarter. Eagles very comfortable just chewing up clock here. Taking the play clock down inside of 10 seconds, maybe even far as five seconds. Third and eight. Blunt shifts over to the other side. Fake the handoff. Wentz out of the pocket. Wentz has room. Wentz makes a move and comes up short of the first down. Wentz upset at himself. He tried that fake inside the five. And Justin Simmons with a great tackle in the open field here. Trying to give him the old okie doke, but that's perfect. Getting your head right to the legs in front of the ball carrier to bring him down. And Philadelphia keeps its offense on the field. And why, why not? That's a fourth and one. Crowd quiets down for Wentz. The clock at four. And heard. Moving pocket. Wentz makes the connection for Aguilar, and it's enough for a first down. Chris Harris there defensively, and Philadelphia gets three more cracks at this thing, or four. He didn't get it by much, but the pro ball is just perfectly thrown. Aguilar doing a good job of getting the needed distance for the first down. So when he catches the ball, he can secure it and get down and pick it up. 13th play of the drive. First and goal for Philadelphia. Option. Clement untouched for the score. Touchdown, Eagles. Dominating performance for this Philadelphia offense. Well, it's an option play, and they're going to force Von Miller to make a decision. He's going to go after Wentz. Wentz sees it, pitches it cleanly back to Clement. Block on the outside by Hollins. And Clements is in the end zone for the second time today. Extra point coming after a 13 play 77 yard drive. It took up half the quarter. Elliott knocks it through. It's 38 to 9 Philly. They've done it through the air. They've done it on the ground. They've done it with their defense. Lopsided in Philly. We had the two yard touchdown run. Second rushing touchdown for Philadelphia. Ajayi had one from 46 yards out. And Lane Johnson back on the Philadelphia sideline. Good sign for the Eagles and their star right tackle. Elliott will kick it off. Low kick. Rolling, scooped up at the six. And Booker squeezes through. Takes it to the 30-yard line. That's where Denver will have it. Broncos get the football for the first time in this second half at the 726 mark of the third. Fairs, no hidden fees. That's transparency. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Verizon. The best network and the best unlimited. Philadelphia 38, Denver 9 with 7.26 to play in the third quarter. Broncos go empty here with Osweiler out of the gun. Osweiler throws. Trying to get under it for the pick. It's ruled incomplete. Jalen Mills nearly had his fourth of the season off the deflection. Yeah, Michael Kendricks is going to jump in front of this one, pop it up in the air, and Mills just an instant too late. He trapped he looked, it. He did trap it. Boy, it was real close, though. Ball moves as it hits the ground. Incomplete. Broncos should be thinking about a hurry-up offense. No, no time to huddle it down as much as they are by 29. On second down, it's a run to Anderson. Tries to zigzag out of trouble and picks up just three yards on the play. Curry and Kendricks combined to bring down the Cal product, C.J. Anderson. And it becomes a, really a, a pride situation now for the Bronco offense. 
to get something positive out of this first drive of the second half. Well, we asked Osweiler, what do you bring to Mike McMahon's, Mike McCoy's uh, offense? And he said, I'm just trying to be me. Let my natural leadership take over, have productive conversations with wide receivers and tight ends and running backs and offensive linemen. Osweiler has the time, and it's incomplete. A.J. Derby defended by Malcolm Jenkins, and the punt unit comes on with Riley Dixon. It's just been a whole lot of the same for Denver, what they've experienced during this three-game losing streak. Yeah, turnovers also go both ways while Denver has turned it over quite a bit. They have just six takeaways in the first seven games. Dixon to Barner. Side steps. And Barner takes a shot as he crossed the 20 yard line by Justin Simmons. 52 yard punt, eight yard return. Dejection for Osweiler. And the Broncos. Well, the running game, they have been able to disperse it correctly with Ajayi, Clement, and Blunt all playing key roles here. And Ajayi in his Eagle debut. Eight carries, 77 yards, and a touchdown. Acquired for a 2018 fourth round pick. Wentz looked like he lost it for a moment. And a high throw. Incomplete. Marcus Johnson matched up with Akeem Talib. That's 158 yards on the ground for the running backs today for the Eagles. Ajayi gets into the end zone on 46 yarder. Garrett Blunt averaging just over four yards per carry. Corey Clement has been in the end zone twice once on a screen, once on an option play. Remember the Broncos second best in the NFL allowing just 72 yards per game on the ground that number doubled in the first half and number one overall in total yards allowed this season Philadelphia has topped that average quite a bit Wentz too far for Torrey Smith on a go route against Bradley Roby that was a good throw away basically by Wentz through it uh, where the ball was going to be carried out of bounds but the coverage by Roby dictated that throw. Just a tremendous job by Roby here locating the ball and forcing Torrey Smith to try to fight through it to get the completion. 353 yards of offense for Philadelphia. They come in averaging 371.8 that's number six in the NFL. Kenyon Barner is in on third and ten. They handled the rush initially. Now Wentz is in trouble. Brandon Marshall delayed. And the first sack of the day for this Denver D. Really a smart blitz that time by Brandon Marshall. As he checked out uh, the running back, Barner, who had to pick up on the inside linebacker and that allowed uh, Marshall to hit the gap bring down Wentz. Denver led this game three nothing it was the first lead they've had in a game since week four against Oakland. First lead. Donnie Jones the punt. And this one will roll. To the 26. 55 yard boot for the veteran Jones. As part of the, of the NFL Salute to Service campaign, the Eagles honored members of the U.S. military today. The Army Band Chorus sang the national anthem before the game. Members of all four branches held the flag. Doug Peterson in there as well. And at halftime, the Marine Corps silent drill team performed on the field here at Lincoln Financial. Now, great to see members of our armed forces in attendance here in Philadelphia. Army Navy game often takes place right here in this venue. CJ Anderson with a spin move. And Anderson is dropped at the 25 yard line. In chatting with Doug Peterson, Dan, the 
the positive vibe that he gives off and you know, the things that come out of his mouth that are just not normal or germane to head coaches right now there's concern for Tim Jernigan team is huddling around Jernigan his defensive lineman forming a semicircle Jernigan has had a huge impact on this Philadelphia D line he's up quickly and Bo Allen will slide in to replace him so Jernigan walking off on his own Doug Peterson was among those there to check on Jernigan and that uh, what Fletcher Cox said about Jernigan when he watched him playing for Baltimore how he stood out how hard he played he said he could envision him being a perfect fit for this style of defense of Jim Schwartz and he has filled that role perfectly. Second and 11 now for Denver. Clock is moving 448 to play in the third. Osweiler operating out of the gun. 38 to 9 Eagles. Osweiler on the delayed rush just throws it up and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod for Philadelphia. McLeod cuts it back. McLeod still going. And finally brought down by Bowles. Second INT of the day for the Philadelphia defense. You just can't make a desperation throw like this. Frustration by Osweiler. He's in trouble right about here. He gets hit by Cox, and there's just no way that's going to be complete. Uh, he tossed up a prayer under pressure. Fletcher Cox was ready to bring down Osweiler. That's just where you got to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> He's a whirling dervish. He is. A big one. There he goes 6'4", 3'10". World's biggest whirling dervish. Fletcher Cox. Well, he checked with Indomitian Sue when Schwartz got the job because Sue played for him in Detroit. And he said, oh, oh here again. Enjoyed his D. Ripping through. But well, Garrett Blunt, five-yard gain. Lane Johnson is back in there for Philadelphia. Well, what Schwartz does with his defensive line is he makes it simple for them. You have really one job, a job and a half maybe. Number one, rush the passer. Number two, if you're there when the ball carries there, fine, make the tackle. But with the linebackers, the speed and agility that they have, they clean up so much. And remember, Malcolm Jenkins, their safety is their leading tackle. Second and five for the Eagles. Once on again. Blunt. He spun down at the four yard line, picks up two on the play. Gotsis and Marshall combining for Denver. We're down to three and a half to play in the third. Philly will go with six offensive linemen here and Blunt will head to the sidelines. It is now Ajayi. On third and three. Wentz steps and throws. Touchdown! Alshon Jeffrey. The Eagles are pouring it on. Well, the mobility of Carson Wentz here to be able to throw on the run. Watch him read the defense here. Wanted to go to a giant in the flat. He was covered. Knew his outlet receiver was 17 in the back of the end zone as he just runs away from Talib for the easy score. Five, four touchdown passes for Carson Wentz. 199 yards through the air. Second of the day for Jeffrey. And the extra point is no good. This has been maybe the one issue for Jake Elliott. That's the third extra point miss that he's had. Up. 
The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the all-new 2017 Jeep Compass. And by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Back in Philadelphia, it's a party atmosphere right now, and why not? The Eagles will improve to 8-1 this season. They'll hit the bye week. Best record in the NFL. Seven straight wins when this one is finally through. 44-9, they are blowing out the Broncos. Elliott who just missed the extra point will kick it off. Coming out to the 25 for Denver as Booker takes a knee. That's been a rough afternoon for Brock Osweiler. His return to the starting line. Pressure on the very first play of the game. Knocks him down. Almost picked there by Douglas. More pressure. And then the interception to Robinson as he steps in front of the slant route. And of course the last one. In the second half, Osweiler's 0 for 3. This afternoon, 8 for 21. 108 yards. And two picks. Yeah, the numbers are not pretty. Brock Osweiler stepping in today for Trevor Simeon, named the starting quarterback earlier this week. And now the questions will start popping up regarding Paxton Lynch as well. Hey, look, not easy to take over the job in Philadelphia. On the schedule for Denver next is New England. But in our conversations with the head coach Vance Joseph, we didn't get the sense that Paxton Lynch was ready to come back. And I asked him if it was physical or mental. He said, actually, it's both. Still battling the shoulder and still uh, getting comfortable with the offense. Second and nine. Swing it. To Booker. It's a man miss. Booker gets a first down. Well earned by Devontae Booker. Destiny Viao in on the hit. So is it a pretty straightforward decision that you give Brock Osweiler another week, trying to work things out and prepare for the New England Patriots. Well, first of all, he's not going to see the type of pass rush out of the Patriots that he's seen today. So the pressure won't be as great. And, uh, you know, he's obviously a little bit rusty. Has to be. Hadn't played in a long time. His first start was November the 22nd, 2015, for Denver at Chicago. And it's been a roller coaster ride for Osweiler. Loses the ball. It's recovered by Paradis, and Bo Allen put the heat on Osweiler. Oh, Bo Allen will get credit for a sack here as he knocks his ball out. Clearly a fumble. And what a uh, effort by Allen with the left hand to swipe it right out of the grip of Osweiler. Paxton Lynch, second year QB was in a competition for the number one job that Trevor Simeon won, cemented by the fact that Lynch had that injury in the preseason. Osweiler gets rid of it and completes it to A.J. Derby. It's 11 yards, hit by Nigel Bradham. That's Derby's first catch of the day. Came in with 17 catches. He's more of the uh, receiving tight end for Denver. Nice beak. Third and five. Good wingspan. Very good. 7-1 wingspan. The bird <laughs> recognizing a relative. Yeah, no relation. Maybe a distant cousin. Final 15 seconds of the third quarter. Osweiler upstairs and caught by Cody Latimer. Rasul Douglas with the coverage. Yeah, great adjustment to the ball by Latimer. Went up high. The Broncos something to cheer about at the end of the third. Philadelphia put up 17 points in the first quarter. Backed it up with 14 points in the second. 13 in the third. They built a 44-9 lead over the Denver Broncos as we start the fourth quarter. Denver has it first and 10 at the 26 yard line. Ian Eagle, Dan Fouts, Evan Washburn, the rest of our NFL on CBS crew here at Lincoln Financial Field. 
15th year as the home of the Eagles. Flag down. And Fletcher Cox clearly offsides. Offside. Defense number 91. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. So the penalty against Cox. As Eagles front has been in attack mode. From the word go. Line of scrimmage is now the 21. Nine penalties, 70 yards against Denver. Five for 35 for Philly. Jamal Charles is in. And it's Charles over the middle. That's the first down for Denver at the 15-yard line. Hit by Michael Kendricks of the Eagles. Paul Charles now at 295 career receptions. Battling back from a couple of devastating knee injuries while he was with the Chiefs. We asked Vance Joseph, how do you keep everybody on the same page here, even during the losing streak? He said, we've been very direct with our players. There's no hiding from the numbers. The defense has been top notch. Running game is strong. The turnover differential is what stands out. Charles brought down. Just inside the 15, it's a one-yard pickup. Kendricks again for Philly. Kendricks is having a heck of an afternoon. You can see the defensive line, they're thinking one thing. Get to Osweiler, and it's up to the linebackers, like Kendricks, to clean things up. Yeah, he's got excellent speed. Bradham is very strong against the run. They lost Jordan Hicks, and Walker has stepped in. Second and nine. Deep drop. Osweiler out of the pocket. Brought down from behind by Bradham. He's a thumper. A loss of three. It's a sack for Nigel Bradham. And that's his first of the year. Defense been fighting through the block of the tight end, Jeff Hireman. And Osweiler is going to outrun very few players. And certainly not Bradham. Now it brings up third and 12. Jim Schwartz pushing all the right buttons, and he's got the right pieces to work with. Out of the gun. And whistles blow this play dead. Offense. They didn't get the Five snap off in time. Now tack it on to another error. For Denver, that's 10 penalties, 75 yards for Vance Joseph's squad. And remember, Evan Washburn talking about self-inflicted penalties. Just like that one, Broncos continue to struggle. Now, a lot of smiles on that Philadelphia sideline, the way this season has gone, the way this day has gone. Eagles holding opponents to 31% on third down. This is a third and 17. Osweiler gets rid of it quickly, asking Charles to create. And Charles takes a shot. Just across the 11-yard line from Corey Graham. And obviously no thought of settling for the field goal here. You think about the turnover year to year, Dan. Eight of the 12 teams that made the playoffs last year would miss the playoffs right now. Philadelphia did not make the playoffs last year. They've got the best record in the NFL. People complain about parity, except the teams that are winning. It keeps a lot of fan bases interested year in, year out. Osweiler throws, catch and curl, tripped up before Thomas could get to the end zone. And nobody wants to get in the end zone probably more than Demarius Thomas. It's been 13 games since he's been able to put a touchdown on the board. Bowls out in front. Also. The longest tenured Bronco, Demarius Thomas, now in his eighth year in the league. First and goal for Denver. Charles in the backfield. 
Give it to Charles, a blast. Didn't have enough. And it looked like there was a head of steam as he hit the hole, but it closed up. And Kendrick's making another play for Philly. Now you talked about the speed of number 95. He has been timed at 4-4 in the 40. And he looks like he was the running back that time trying to get in the end zone. He meets Charles and sends him sideways. 12th play of the drive. Second and goal from the one. Latimer in motion. Osweiler on the move. Packs the ball. Osweiler throws it away. Malcolm Jenkins the pressure. That is such a, a predictable play for so many teams on the goal line trying to get a little pick on the rollout. It was played perfectly by the Eagles. They didn't go for the potential pick play. Six offensive linemen for Denver, third and goal. Looking for their first touchdown of the day. And a timeout called. First choice timeout, Philadelphia. Timeout, Philly, with 9.49 to play in this fourth quarter. They only had 10 players on the field. Saturday, an SEC doubleheader. First, East Division showdown, Florida battle South Carolina. Then, number one, Georgia takes on 14th ranked Auburn. The action kicks off at noon Eastern on CBS. Let's check in with Evan Washburn. Evan? Well, guys, just a quick update. You're not seeing Emmanuel Sanders on the field. You haven't seen him this whole series. He's being held out. The official word is questionable, but that right ankle is still a concern. And with the score, what it is, he is not in the game, guys. Yeah, he acknowledged in our meeting last night he's not feeling like himself quite yet, but felt that the ankle was good enough to at least give it a shot and he played the majority of the day. Third and goal. Osweiler. Touchdown. Demarius Thomas. The streak is over for Thomas. And the Broncos finally get it into the end zone. Well, Garrett Bowles 72 along with Fowler. Now that is a pick play, but it's a legal pick play because it's within one yard of the line of scrimmage. Perfectly executed. Great job by Benny Fowler there. And you can see Bowles getting out there. It wasn't easy for Thomas. He had to catch it twice, but he's in the end zone. 13 plays, 75 yards. Demarius Thomas, first touchdown of the season. Extra point from McManus. And with 9.45 to play, Philadelphia with a 44 to 16 lead over the Broncos. More fourth quarter action when we come back. This is the same Denver team that crushed the Cowboys in week two, 42 to 17. It's going to be their fourth straight loss. Long drive for the Broncos. Thomas gets the touchdown. Barner returning it from the 14 for Philly and he goes down as he crossed the 20 yard line. And new quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles who happens to be an old quarterback for Philly. Nick Foles went to the Pro Bowl in 2013 had 27 touchdowns and two interceptions that season. Stops along the way in St. Louis when the Rams were there and Kansas City. So Andy Reid, who had him in Philly, brought him over to the Chiefs. And now Foles is back in Philly working with Doug Peterson. Yeah, familiar with the offense. Peterson, offensive coordinator for Andy Reid in KC. Interesting in talking to Vaughn Miller about the differences between KC's offense and Philly's offense. <laughs> so KC with Andy Reid is at the sixth level. Yeah. Eagles at the second, but climbing. He had trades for the Eagles, but he just said Kansas City. That's like a graduate level course. And for Carson Wentz, what a day. Yeah, 15 of 27. And the touchdown pass to Jeffrey got him started. The screen pass perfectly executed to Clement. So he cuts back for the score. 
then an acrobatic catch by Burton. And a perfect strike to Jeffrey over the middle from the goal line. 23 touchdowns this season for Carson Wentz. That's the most in the NFL through nine games in a season for a QB under 25 since Dan Marino. And off and nothing there for Clement. And when you can have your name in the same sentence as Dan Marino, that's saying something. The tremendous career that Marino had, especially at the start, when he took the Dolphins to the Super Bowl. You know, it's interesting that Wentz has been able to use some of the things that worked for him at the collegiate level, North Dakota State. And he said that's all Peterson and Reich being open to the idea of it. He said, well, what about high school? You got something maybe from the high school? Eh, probably not. But the, the big kid thing is that uh, they all kind of echoed the same thing when they said they, they checked their egos at the door yep. and are willing to listen. Falls loses it, and it's scooped up by Marshall, who will take it to the end zone for a touchdown. Denver creates the turnover, and Marshall turns it into six. Yeah, it's Vaughn Miller from the uh, left side of the screen going right by Similat Malu. Perfect timing and a good scoop and score by Marshall. Miller didn't get Wentz, but he got Foles with a strip sack. Yeah, that's his eighth sack of the season. That is 81 and a half in his career. And Marshall gets the touchdown on the scoop and run. Training staff is checking on Brandon Marshall. That's Marshall's first career fumble recovery. Known as Lightning, Todd Davis known as Thunder. And Thunder, unfortunately for Denver, inactive today. 44 23, 809 to play in the fourth. FedEx. Choose FedEx Ground for your affordable and fast shipping. And by Honda. Great deals are waiting at your Honda dealer. I think the beard was more winded than the bird on the rocky steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there's just birds and beards everywhere here in Philly. This has got to be a huge day for the Eagle family. <laughs> it is. Yeah, there, there's a lot of cross pollination. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Yeah, I'm That's not sure 40, what I call it. 44 points across one of those Outside kick handled by Philadelphia as McManus popped it in the air. And Trey Burton on the hands team comes away with it. 8.07 to go in the fourth quarter. And this is almost as tough a catch as he made for the touchdown here. As he is hit by Simmons as the ball gets there. Good effort by Simmons trying to get it out. So Eagles will have it at the 48 of Denver. Two touchdowns for the Broncos in the last minute 36, but basically window dressing right now with Philadelphia putting 44 on the board at home. Corey Clement in the backfield with Nick Foles under center. Clement makes a cut. And he's ridden down by Vaughn Miller on the play after the gain of one. Clock ticks under eight minutes to play now. Well, for Vance Joseph, trying to remain positive and keep the message alive to his team, we asked him about dealing with adversity and coaches that he learned from. He said Mike Nolan would just throw himself deeper into the work. Wade Phillips, very consistent personality, win or lose, said the same thing about Gary Kubiak, who was very even, and Marvin Lewis. He said similar, except he really knew when to push the guys during critical moments. Now, another offsides, this time on Von Miller again. Six times this season. Neutral zone infraction. Defense. He's been guilty of that. Five-yard penalty, second down. You know, this defense has obviously been outstanding uh, this season for Denver. They have had a problem controlling opposing tight ends. And that theme played out once again today, even with the injury to Zach Ertz. Combination of Selleck and Burton has been effective for Philly. And especially in the first half when they had all their catches, five total. Filling in for Zach Ertz. 
Joe Woods, defensive coordinator, was the defensive backs coach for the Denver Broncos. Big hit is Clement. Took a shot from Philly native Zaire Anderson. Loss of two on the play. So the Eagles have a bye week, and then they will be at Dallas for a big one. Home for Chicago, three straight road games at Seattle, at L.A., so back-to-back -back West Coast trips, followed by a short jaunt to New Jersey and the New York Giants. That is a tough stretch here, especially those two where you've got to make that cross-country trip and play two excellent teams. Falls from the gun, on the ground on a third and six. Clement. It's close. The initial spot appears to be just short for Philadelphia. And the big the other thing about bringing a Jai in is it creates more competition. It does. And competition makes you better. Well, Garrett wants on a one-year deal. So it's not like Blunt is locked up for three or four years. This was a decision made by Philadelphia with the bigger picture in mind as well. Yeah, uh, late in the year, bad weather. Great to have another power back. And Ajayi is under contract beyond this year. He's still on his rookie deal. Foles on fourth down, looking for it all down the sideline. And it's caught by Aguilar. Aguilar lost the football at the end to Chris Harris, who snatched it away. And Aguilar having an animated discussion. That's the old tie base goes to the runner. In this case, the uh, simultaneous catch goes to the offense. There's the catch originally by Aguilar, and he took two steps, so that's a good call by the officials. And it's first and goal. And the challenge flag comes out. Thrown by Vance Joseph. Stops the clock with just under five minutes to play. Aguilar and Talib, along with Harris, having extended conversations. It's a terrific grab by Aguilar. Nah, he's Denver's got it. Ruling the, is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. Yeah, that play was over. While Harris got his arm in there, Aguilar had control, and he was down. Yep. Harris eventually came away with the football. But watch how he pins it with his right arm and tries to fight off Harris with his left arm. And it shows the toughness of Harris. He's going to stick with it, but uh, this play was long over. This should be a quickie. Aguilar, give him a lot of credit in his third year because the first two years were disappointing. Last year, 36 catches, 365 yards, two touchdowns. He's over the yardage total already this year and the touchdown total. And, and it goes back to creating competition. You bring in Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith. Well, Aguilar, in just his third year, has responded. And played very well. Five scores on this season. Carson Wentz tipped his hat to Aguilar and his work ethic and his confidence. He said there's no doubt he is as more confident than he was last year. After review, the receiver does maintain possession throughout the entire process of the catch. The ruling on the field is confirmed. First and goal, Philadelphia. Denver will be charged with their first time out of the half. So first and goal for Philadelphia. That was on a fourth down throw. By Carson Wentz's backup, Nick Foles. Aguilar still chatting. I'm not sure anybody's listening. <laughs> Just looking for somebody to talk to. From the four. With 4.49 to play. Clement in the backfield already has two touchdowns today. Clement fights into the end zone. Number three for the rookie Corey Clement. Philadelphia has put a 50 burger on the board. Just an overpowering job by the offensive line. 
as he is not hit till he gets to the line of scrimmage and then backs his way over Broncos for the score. Adam Momento, someone in the front row. Yeah, you should Instagram that, Miss, immediately. <laughs> Extra point is straight through. 51 to 23. Philadelphia. What a performance. Order here in Philadelphia. Philadelphia 51, Denver 23. First time the Eagles have scored 50 points or more since 2013 when they beat the Bears 54 to 11. And the last time the Broncos gave up 50 or more, you have to go back to 2010. The Raiders with a 59 14 victory over Denver. Booker, the return man. Booker stays on his feet and a flag thrown as he is dumped at the 10 yard line. Scoring the return, legal block in the back, return team. Number 34, half the distance to the goal, first down Denver. Will Parks the penalty, J Hill the hit. And 440 left here in the fourth. Denver will have the long flight back home. And then the New England Patriots on the schedule next Sunday night. For Carson Wentz and company, a bye week and a sterling eight and one record. Osweiler. It's hauled in by Thomas across the 10 yard line for Denver. Four and a half remaining. Pick up six yards on the play. Dexter McDougal seeing some action. Former New York Jet. Acquired in a trade just before the regular season got underway. Now it's Devontae Booker in the backfield. Booker leans forward across the 15-yard line. That will be enough for a first down. They'll move the chains with an even four minutes left here in the fourth. First time the Eagles are wearing their all black uniforms this season. Introduced the black tops and bottoms for the first time in 2014. They wore the black tops before in the early 2000s. Booker with the catch. That is some deep research there. <laughs> A fashion note. Thanks. You're the best. Well, just in case, Stan. Just in case. How about a just in case tackle here? Perfect. Going down low, Kamu Gruje Hill. Out of Eastern oh. Illinois. Sixth round pick of the Patriots last year. He was waved and picked up by the Eagles. Flat down. Osweiler darts one to the sideline. And it's snagged by Hireman. Nope. Out of bounds. May not matter. Yeah, it's going to be holding against the Broncos. This uh, Eagle pass. Rolling on the field was an incomplete pass. We also have a legal use of hands, hands to the face. Offense number 75. That penalty is declined. They're down. Gene has a very easy, breezy delivery when the mic goes on. Very comfortable and confident. Yeah, he almost like today a third man in the booth, as much airtime as he's gotten. He has. Well, it's like having a, a second sideline reporter. Yeah, he's actually on the field. <laughs> he's on the field. <laughs> Between the sidelines. And Evan works the sidelines. What a team. 12 penalties, 85 yards for the Broncos. Five penalties for Philly for 35 yards. Just over three minutes to play. Osweiler. Incomplete. In the direction of Benny Fowler, the third. And now it's fourth and 12. Well, the Eagles still have their front liners in there with Graham and Fletcher Cox. They're all going for those incentive clause sacks now. Osweiler, 17 of 33, 193 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. Riley Dixon on the punt. It. 
at Kenyon Barner at the 46 of Philly. Denver had been the only team in the NFL that had not allowed a rushing touchdown. They have given up three touchdowns on the ground today. Fair catch called for at the 39. That's where the Eagles will have it with 255 to play. Coming up next on CBS. Great matchup. Alex Smith and the Chiefs headed to Dallas to battle Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. The second half of our NFL on CBS doubleheader. Smith, 16 touchdowns this season, no interceptions. And Dak Prescott, impressive touchdown to interception ratio as well. It's interesting, nobody's calling Alex Smith a game manager anymore. No. The M and MVP doesn't stand for manager. I, I think, though, because they drafted Mahomes, maybe even subconsciously, Alex Smith got to the point of, oh, right. I, I, I'm just going to let it rip. Well, he admitted that to us basically earlier in the year. Smallwood. Wendell Smallwood getting in on the action. Every running back contributing in some form. That's a 26 yard run by Smallwood. And the key here for the Eagles is that it, here at the end of the game, and a game that has a, turned into a route, you're not having to use your front line backs to run the clock out. You can bring in a Smallwood or Clement and save a Jai and Blunt for the heavy work later in the season. Longest run of the season for Smallwood. And for Denver, the numbers are out of whack. 203 yards rushing for Philadelphia. Smallwood runs into a wall, led by Gotsis, and that's going to take us to the two-minute warning in Philly. The Eagles soaring 51 points today. Final two minutes. Denver, a team searching for answers right now. This will be four straight losses. And for Wentz and the Eagles, seven consecutive wins. Second and eight, Nick Foles in a quarterback for Philadelphia. And up to Smallwood, and he's spun down. Now, right now, Carson Wentz is popular in a number of states, including the state of Pennsylvania. And a timeout called, the fans reacting as Denver called the timeout. The executive producers of the NFL on CBS, Sean McManus and Harold Bryant, president of CBS Sports, David Burson. Today's game produced by Mark Wolf, directed by Bob Fishman, vice president of remote production of CBS Sports, Steve Karasik, vice president of studio production for CBS Sports, Tyler Hale. NFL Today, produced by Drew Kaliski, directed by Bob Matina, creative director of CBS Sports, Peter Radovich, Jr. Associate directors of today's game, Bill Thayer, Steve Murphy, broadcast associates, Justin Haley and Ryan Pavlicek. Technical manager, Rick Godwin. Technical director, Terry Rosich. Audio supervisor, Kevin Little. Stats provided by David Freed and Matt Jenkins, our spotter, Jim Stamus. And our phenomenal camera crew. Week in and week out. The best at what they do. A minute 46 left. Denver has used its final timeout. Hulkamania. Georgia mania. Igor mania. You know, just a lot of mania. They're all in the same family, aren't they? <laughs> Eagles here and Mania there. Why the timeouts here if you're Denver? Yeah. There's Bob. Chris steady. Very steady. That's why he's number one. Is that Kevin Wood? That was Kevin Wood. On fourth and eight, tripped up. Smallwood. Parks makes the play. And Denver's going to get the ball with a minute 42 left. Here in the fourth. Janice, who is with us every single week. It's camera three. Well, the fans that did stick around have gone into celebration mode.
Yeah, there's a Philadelphia native for you. Bruce Levitt. Camera 20. Philly Strong. <laughs> a little down on the list there. What's that? Well, we've jumped around a little bit. Osweiler through the hands of Latimer. Final minute 38 here. Oh, there's Mike Marks. A pro's pro. John Bruno. Is he wearing shorts? Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah was, <laughs> 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 no words, no words to describe that look. He's a hustler. Osweiler out of the pocket and connects downfield with Isaiah McKenzie. So it's home for New England, then home for Cincinnati for Denver. The Broncos dropped a three and five on the season, four straight losses. And really, if there's one stadium that Tom Brady has struggled in, it would have to be in Denver over the years. For Doug Peterson and Frank Reich and this coaching staff, you could not write a better script the way the first nine games have gone for Philadelphia. Benny Fowler in a matchup with Rasul Douglas. Yeah, they've been solid. Offense, defense, special teams. Have just one turnover today. That was the fumble by Foles that was turned into a touchdown for Denver. But Wentz, clean game. Four touchdowns, no interceptions. I think the best part, if you're an Eagles fan, Wentz is in his second year. Yeah. It's scary the things that he could accomplish in Philly. Pass is incomplete. Trying to feed it to McKenzie. It was Dexter McDougal back there and a flag thrown back at the 42-yard line. One last one for Gene Steratore for good measure. Unnecessary roughness on the offense. Garrett Bowles. So with 124 left. Broncos now have it at the 35 yard line. Dan, 45 teams have started 7-1 since 1990. All but two of those have made the playoffs. Only the 2012 Chicago Bears and the 96 Washington Redskins started out 7-1 and didn't make the postseason. Catch made by Charles. Eagles will improve to 8-1 with this victory. And it came in with a two-and-a-half game lead over Dallas. Yep. Dallas against Kansas City tonight. That lead could grow. Have that game coming up for you here on CBS. The Cowboys and the Chiefs. Jim Nance, Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson will have the call for you. And now Riley Dixon will punt it to Kenyon Barner. With 45 seconds left, Denver is out of timeouts, and this one will be in the books soon enough. If they would snap it. Five seconds on the play clock. If they get a delay again, delay that'll be penalty number 14. Oh. Five yards. Gene's not done. Fourth down. That's 14 penalties against Denver. And I'm not sure why this 14th one. Fourteen penalties, 105 yards. Dixon with the kick. Marner wants to return it. Why not? They're going to kick it, I guess. Might as well return it. Andy Janovic with a hit down low to bring him down on special teams. So, Denver now 3-5. and five. Same record as the Chargers and the Raiders in the AFC West. Philadelphia. 
dominating the NFC East at 8 and 1. Fist bumps all around for Carson Wentz. And for Doug Peterson. The Eagles are clicking. That's it. Philadelphia dominates Denver. 51 to 23. The Eagles roll at home over the Broncos. Coming up next, game two of our doubleheader, the Chiefs at the Cowboys. For Dan Fouts, Evan Washburn, the rest of our CBS crew, Ian Eagle saying so long from the city of brotherly love. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.